Hey, good morning, everybody. So I told you my next video was gonna be about parallelism and concurrency and threads and thread safety and that sort of thing. And I was planning on doing that after my vacation. But I got out here on my vacation and I got some ideas. And so I decided to take a little bit of a detour and uh, share my vacation with you, I guess, a little bit. I'm in Cambodia. I used to live here from uh, 98 to 2000. Can you that Jack Mai, but I can play Jirana. So I lived here for two years. It's great to be back. So I'm in Phnom Penh, not Phnom Penh, not Phnom Penh, definitely not Phnom Penh. It's Phnom Penh, Phnom Penh. Okay, Phnom, like uh, you got a, a, a hard O, O, Phnom, Phnom. Hi, Penh, it's got a little nya at the end, like Penh, 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 Penh. I don't know why it bugs me so much, but uh, you know, hearing the whole world say it wrong, ah. Anyway, now you know how to say it right, awesome. It's been wonderful to take my family back and show them some of the places that I used to work, some of the places I used to go when I was younger. But being here has also reminded me of some of the similarities between learning computer science, computer programming, and learning foreign languages. And so today I want to talk a little about those similarities because I think they might help you. I studied German in high school. Then when I was 19, I came to Cambodia. And for two years, I learned Khmer, that's Cambodian. The R is silent. And now I'm a computer scientist and I teach computer science -y stuff for a living. What I've realized over the years is that learning computer science and learning foreign languages is actually very, very similar. But students sometimes don't see it, and so today we're gonna talk about it. See, I often see students take on a computer science class much the same way that they might take on a history class. And it just doesn't work that well. You see, nothing against history, I love history. History is amazing and it's super important. But in history class, you're gonna memorize a bunch of stuff. Who started what fight? Who invented what? Who made what law? And if your history teacher's good, then you're gonna learn some principles about the world and you're gonna learn not to repeat some of the bad stuff that happened in the past, and that's awesome. So please, you know, don't take this as a slight against any history class because history is super important. But CS is different. In CS, we're not just trying to learn a bunch of facts. We're not just learning a bunch of information that you can recover later on. Our goal in computer science is fluency. Students who are new to computer science often come into a class, they sit down, they listen to the lecture, they write down the notes, they write down everything I say, they, they copy down all the stuff I write on the whiteboard and they think their job is done. That's a lot like sitting down with a Cambodian English dictionary for 30 hours and expecting to know how to speak. It's just not going to happen. And with CS, it's really the same. You got to apply the stuff that you're learning. You got to use it over and over again if you want to gain fluency. It's not a spectator sport. You have to do it. You need practice. You need to apply what you're learning. And your practice needs to be frequent and varied. You need to look for and find different kinds of projects, different kinds of scenarios to test what you're learning. Practice, practice, practice. Now at the end of my videos, I often tell you, hey, here's a new topic that I've taught you. Go play with it. This isn't just a nice thing that I say. This is something that is critical for your development. If you want to learn your craft, you need to take the things that you learn and you need to go apply them. You need to use them. You need to make sure that they're yours, that they're in your brain, not just something that you sort of heard that you sort of are familiar with and you kind of remember and maybe you can look up if you need to. No, you got to practice these things because the point of learning computer science is not to memorize a bunch of commands or API calls. Honestly, you can look those up in 30 seconds if you forget them. The point of learning computer science is you are trying to rewire your brain to think a different way so that you can solve problems with technology. And likely problems that no one else has solved and problems that you can't anticipate right now. And any of you that have learned a new language know that the fastest way to fluency is immersion. You gotta jump in with both feet. When I first came to Cambodia 20 years ago, English was not very useful. Almost nobody spoke English. Things have changed a lot around here actually. And the result was I learned a lot and I learned it really fast. You know, with CS is a little harder. I don't, I'm not necessarily suggesting that you get together with your roommates and say, hey, uh, let's speak nothing but CS all around the apartment all the time. I'm not even sure what that would be like. Okay, people, from now on, all we're gonna do is speak C at the dinner table. Like, okay, yeah, so that's probably not gonna work. But you can do things like hackathons. Like you can f basically find a project, dump yourself into that project, the clock's ticking and you've gotta make stuff happen with other people who are gonna hold you accountable. Hackathons are a lot of fun and you'll learn a lot. Recently, we've had a few hackathons at Clemson. They've been great. I've attended both of them and I'm just amazed at the things that the students learn. You learn things by doing things, by diving into a project that you just can't learn by sitting in class. And if you can't find a hackathon nearby, just go find yourself a project, any project. Just find something that you want to do. Hey, I wonder how you do this with a computer and make it happen. 
So another way that learning CS is a lot like learning a foreign language is the learning curve. When you start learning CS, you're going to feel totally overwhelmed. Sometimes this scares people. It's totally normal. At that phase, you're learning a lot. There's a lot you don't understand. Your head probably hurts a lot every so often. It's okay. That's what it felt like back when I arrived in Cambodia for the first little while. I was learning Cambodian. That's just how it is. Your brain's learning to process a ton of new material. Over time, you find things get a little bit better. You're going to understand more. You're going to actually be able to get work done. It's still going to be a lot of work. It's still going to feel like it takes a lot of effort and you're not going to feel super confident. And then finally, one day, something magical is going to happen. And anyone that has learned a foreign language well will tell you the same thing. Someday you realize, hey, I just had a non-trivial conversation with someone and I didn't have to think about the words. They just came out of my mouth. And that's a wonderful day. That doesn't mean you stop learning at that point. At that point, the language that you're learning becomes a joy. It just becomes fun because you have a skill that you don't really have to think about to use. Now, when learning computer science, people go through these same stages. And I mention this because maybe some of you are in this phase where you're feeling really overwhelmed and you're wondering if you're ever going to be good at this. You're just sitting there going, man, this just feels terrible. And you look around and maybe some other kids in your class have moved on to a different stage and they're looking really confident and they're having fun. or Maybe they're just faking it. But the point is, is that you're feeling very alone and overwhelmed and confused. And I just want to let you know it gets better. This is normal. I was there. Everybody else that has succeeded in this field was there. You're going to be OK. You're going to make it because that's just part of the journey. As you go through this, it's going to be tough, but eventually if you keep working at it, if you keep finding ways to immerse yourself in the material, if you keep working, practicing, learning new things, trying new projects, eventually you're going to get to a stage where you don't have to focus on the minute details as much, and you're going to be able to focus on solving the big problems that are important in this world and that are important to you. And then computer science and computer engineering become awesome because you're not sitting around worrying about syntax errors and seg faults. Those things are just coming naturally. Hey, so I'm in Guyp National Park and I had another idea. So we're thinking about that learning curve that I was talking about earlier. So one more thing I forgot to mention. As people are learning languages, the thing that often happens is that you get to a point where you're proficient, where you're understanding most of what people are saying to you and things are getting kind of easy. And, and it's at this point that a lot of people stop working as hard. They sort of let off the gas and they, uh, and they kind of coast. And this is okay if you're striving for, to be mediocre, but if you really want to master your craft, uh, whether you're learning a foreign language or whether you're learning computer science, as the difficulty starts to ease up, that's the time when you really want to, you want to take stock of what you're doing and you really want to push harder. You really want to see if you can't uh, gain new ground, gain new skills, try to look around and see what other people are doing and really listen. Like with foreign language, it's, it's trying to listen to improve your accent, um, trying to make your voice sound the way that they sound. With programming, it's more like looking at design patterns and um, you know styles of code from people that you respect and who do who write really good code, and basically trying to see what what works well in different kinds of situations because there's a lot of nuance to this game. So anyway, I just uh, wanted to share that thought. Now back to the hike. Okay, hello, hello, Sosabai. Hello, Yung Teng Oknia No Cambodia. Good evening. ลาวนอนลาวนอนเนาะเนาะเนาะเนาะเนาะเนาะเนาะเนาะเนาะเนาะเนาะเนาะเนาะเนาะเนาะเนาะเนาะเนาะเนาะเนาะเนาะเนา
Ay, ito ito ma. Ito ito ma. So, kumain. Ang mahitang pipi at mga saing-saing na ito. Bye. 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 Tapos yung mga yung kanya. Dan. Dan. Kapot. Okay. Okay. Ay, ba. O, sinji yung neting off niya. Diyang drama so kumain. Malang nom. So that's really all I wanted to say on this one. It's time for me to get back to vacation, but I hope this helps you as you start the new year to uh, maybe rethink how you study computer science and try to learn, try to be a little bit better and stronger than you were before. 2019 is going to be a great year. I'm really excited. There will be more videos coming. Please subscribe. Click the bell if you want to make sure you don't miss them. It's going to be a lot of fun. So Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and I will see you on the other side of the Pacific.